In this book, I would like to stress the importance of Muslim feminism and official Islam in the struggle against female genital mutilation, known as FGM. Female genital mutilation, or female genital cutting, is a practice still perpetuated in many countries of the Muslim world to control women's sexual life, oppress them, deprive them of their dignity, and avoid their sexual satisfaction. Opposing this horrible tradition, true Islam guarantees sexual rights to women. Women in Islam have the right to be sexually satisfied. Therefore, as a logical consequence, FGM is anti-Islamic because anything that opposes women and their dignity is anti-Islamic in its core message. According to the Quranic message, men and women have been created in the best form. Quran 95.4 reads, We have created the human being in the best form. Regarding marriage and relationships between women and men, as Allah's creatures, Quran 30.21 reads, And of his signs is that he created for you from yourselves mates that you may find tranquility in them, and he placed between you affection and mercy. Indeed, in that are signs for a people who give thought. If Islamic marriage is based on affection and mercy between wife and husband, how can FGM be accepted in an Islamic environment which supports sexual satisfaction as a means for familiar and social peace and tranquility? Many Muslims oppose female genital mutilation in the name of Islam, but they are too few and their voices are not heard. Many prefer to ignore the problem or are afraid of talking about this taboo issue in their communities because the sexual and intimate life of women is a very private affair not to be discussed in public. However, the fact that the lives of these women is destroyed since their childhood by a horrifying tradition like FGM means that this is not a private matter but something we have to fight against as a Muslim community, society, and Ummah as a whole, women and men. The paradox of FGM is that women themselves perpetuate this crime. FGM is practiced by older women of a society on small girls to achieve their so-called purity it is a rite of passage to make them fit for marriage. It is violence by women against women. However, in the end, FGM destroys the entire society as women are the pillar of Muslim societies. And according to the Prophet of Islam, paradise is at the feet of the mother. The mother has extreme responsibility towards her children and the entire society. Thus, FGM opposes this responsibility because it destroys the life of the following generation of women. Therefore, my question is, how can we struggle against FGM in the name of Islam? First. We have to prove, using sources from the Quran and Sunnah, that Islam is a creation-oriented faith and belief which opposes physical mutilation in general because Allah's creation is perfect. Secondly, we have to struggle against all traditions opposing the dignity, the rights and the protection granted to women by Islam. Thirdly, the importance of sexual life in Islam should be highlighted to remove taboos and to speak out about the violations of female sexual rights in society. 
Sexual needs are fundamental needs for promoting peace and tranquility in Muslim families and societies. Fourthly, men must be involved in the struggle against FGM in Muslim societies. Men must be educated to respect women and to ban their mutilation in the name of Islam. FGM must be fought against to save marital relationships, which are ultimately important in Islam. Moreover, FGM destroys sexual life for both men and women even if it is, of course, women that suffer more from it on all levels in comparison to men. Fifthly, women must be educated as regards their self-consciousness, their dignity and their self-value. They have to be empowered as women, mothers, daughters, sisters, in the name of Islam, because, as Zainab al-Ghazali said, if women are the sisters of men, as one hadith suggests, then the Islamic occupation with a question of difference and the secular feminist claim that Muslim women have a gender-specific concern miss the point. In the following pages, I present important texts by Muslim scholars in English translation. The first one is a 2006 declaration by the Dar al-Ifta Conference on the Prohibition of Female Genital Mutilation. Ten years after the publication of this important document, we have to ask ourselves where we stand and where we have to go to definitely ban FGM from all Muslim societies in Africa, the Middle East and Asia and in the Western countries into which FGM gradually spreads. FGM is not grounded in any Islamic source. FGM destroys women's life on a physical, emotional, sexual and social level. FGM makes women ill and unhappy. It destroys all Muslim communities in which it is practiced because it opposes marital, familiar and social happiness. The mentioned document stated that families in Egypt want to know from scholars how to act. Consequently, scholars must openly ban FGM in the name of Islam. There is no easier yet more difficult issue, as the real problem is its legal application. It is easy to teach people in Islam that FGM is not Islamic, that it is not in the Quran, and that it is not Sunnah. Nevertheless, it is difficult to eradicate the tradition in all countries where it is practiced. Thus, we need a double movement. On one hand, we need a revolution of the word by opposing all weak ahadith, supporting FGM still existing in Muslim communities, and on the other, a reform in daily lives by freeing villages one by one from FGM to create an FGM-free Muslim Ummah. Legal prohibitions together with educational and social projects. This is Islam's solution against FGM. The second document presented is the research conducted by Dar al-Ifta al Nisiriya on the prohibition of female genital mutilation in 2008. The first step is to show that the legal prohibition of FGM does not oppose the Sharia. Secondly, we have to affirm that the prohibition of FGM is fundamentally Islamic because it supports Islamic creationism and the affirmation of female dignity in the Quran. In the conclusion to the book, I present the interviews I did as editor-in-chief of the portal ProMosaic, which financed this publication about FGM. I talked to different authors and activists from different associations all over the world struggling against FGM. My general conclusion 
is that the struggle against FGM must come from the communities themselves. It must be an internal solution to the problem, combining legal, medical, social, psychological, emotional, religious and cultural approaches to the all-comprehensive female plight called FGM. External solutions are not possible, but external help and support are. So, if you want to help Muslim communities to struggle against FGM as an anti-Islamic tradition, listen to the spirit of Islam based on tranquility, physical and mental health, family and social cohesion, equality and Rama. In particular, the activist Habiba al Hinai from Oman says how important it is for women from the Middle East to engage in the struggle against FGM in the region and for the victims to speak out. Finally, I would also like to stress the importance of involving Muslim media to support the struggle against FGM. FGM must be mentioned in mainstream media and not just in feminist papers. This is why the International Portal for Human Rights Pro Mosaic decided to finance this book. Thank you for reading. Dr. Milena Rampoldi